Maybe Colby Hall can, founding editor of Mediaite, the nation's premier site for news about the news and a producer at News Nation. Uh, Colby, what gives? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a nuanced and complicated story uh, that, um, and the media doesn't like to do nuance and complication. I think there's a number of things at play here. Uh, a, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's lots of shades of gray and media doesn't like to focus on that. B, it's a story that's been around forever and so it probably doesn't rate well. I think the larger issue though, candidly, is that a lot of the people that have produced host, you know, program, network news, and a lot of cable news outlets, um, they live in places that aren't directly affected by um, the problem at the border. So if, you know, a cable news outlet was sort of, uh, I don't know, based in El Paso, I'm sure that it would get a ton more attention. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that don't necessarily see this story as something that applies to them. And this is where we see, you know, a perfect example of how the sort of chattering class, those who comprise mainstream media, Media, how disconnected they are from the vast amount yeah, of disconnected American from citizens. What real people care about. But what's interesting is, is even when they're told real people care about it, whether it be in polling or, for example, this, Rachel Scott, who is an ABC correspondent, was in Ohio for the Ohio Senate race to cover the Republican primary. This is what she tweeted. By far, immigration was the top issue we heard from Ohio Republican voters. Quote, if I had to choose between immigration and inflation, I would swallow hard and accept inflation. This issue at the border has got to be handled and stopped. She's quoting an Ohio voter that she interviewed. How is it possible then that the executives at ABC don't see that and go, oh, gee, we should cover this? I mean, I mean the, the, the obvious think... answer seems to be it doesn't fit their narrative, therefore they ignore it. I think that's a fair assessment. I think there's also a business decision at play. I think, I mean, I think the, a key part of that, that tweet was that she was covering Republican primary. And I think that a lot of news people don't necessarily program for pro Republican-minded people. They know that that audience has gone to more conservative-leaning uh, uh, news coverage. And so as a result, you see that poll, 40% of people care about or find immigration problems very, very important. You could argue that about 41% of Americans identify as really strong Republicans, and I think that that aligns. And I, I think that's a failure. I think that's an admission of failure that when network yeah, news yeah. and other cable outlets cho cho I, I, choose I, I, not I gotta, to cover I something. To, I got to get back to this narrative issue, though, right? Wednesday GMA coverage, 8 minutes, 24 seconds to promote Disney cruises. That makes sense. But only 20 seconds spent on the story of the Army National Guardsmen at the border. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when the network morning shows went wall to wall with border agents whipping people. Uh, for for minutes and hours on end. Yeah, I mean, who owns ABC again? Yeah, it's, well, yeah. It's <laughs> the mouse. Okay. It's Disney. It, 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 so, it explains I mean, that why. Explains that. But, yeah. but but right, there was a there was a guardsman that died at the border, which you know, typically, like someone dies in service, we we honor that individual and get a well, lot of Well, especially when it's the first person in in months or years to have that happen. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security has an answer though for all of this. They are rolling out a disinformation committee uh, led by a woman who, uh, shockingly enough, uh, thought that uh, Hunter Biden's laptop was disinformation uh, as well. Disinformation board to tackle Russia migrant smugglers. Uh, here's Jen Psaki. Take a listen. Disinformation Governance Board to tackle misinformation ahead of the midterms. Um, Secretary Mayorkas said that part of its um, intention was to tackle misinformation in Hispanic communities especially. Can you give us an idea of what this board is going to be doing? We know that there has been a range of disinfo out there about a range of topics. I mean, including COVID, for example, and also elections and eligibility. I just... It's stunning to me that you have a federal agency talking about having a disinformation board. I feel like that's like 1984 in, in real life. Well, I mean, there, there is such a thing as misinformation yeah. and, and targeted disinformation. We've seen that. However, when you, when you put that into government control, into who defines what is disinformation, yeah, that's a real slippery slope. Like, I mean, Boy. even sort of progressive sacred cow John Stewart, even, I mean, he's Canadian, but he said, like, who gets to decide, you know, what's disinformation or not? It's very, very subjective. And I would answer, yeah. typically now, it's the, it's, the, it's the loudest voice in the room. It's the person who's screaming the loudest. Well, and, and, and but it, goes, it gets back to your narrative point. Like, to, to who's go, the most organized? Well, to go full circle also, it's uh, 
to use the term, the mainstream media. But I'm, I'm guessing when we look tomorrow, uh, and we will report on this tomorrow, uh, exactly how many minutes the network newscast spent on the disinformation board being, uh, <laughs> being created. Your laugh says it all. Colby, we got to run. Thank you, Leland. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.